Hi, it's David again. Another video on basically the Mormon Church <clears throat> and my uh, experiences. No one else, just mine. Let me uh, talk about tithing. Tithing is one of the things about the Mormon Church that is one of their main doctrines. Lorenzo Snow was the prophet of the Mormon Church and the Mormon Church was going bankrupt. They were going to take their buildings and temples and uh, IRS and they couldn't afford to uh, pay their creditors. Lorenzo Snow got a uh, revelation boy they've used that word a lot from Jesus and then Jesus said, um, make the people pay 10% of their gross income for the rest of their lives, and uh, you won't have to worry about anything. Jesus was right. <coughs> Jesus was right. So Lorenzo Snow instituted tithing in the Mormon church, and all the members then had to pay 10%. And back in those days, they would bring maybe 10% of their chickens in, or their pigs, or their horses, grain, um, as we move more from a barter system uh, in society, it went to cash. And uh, the Mormons like cash, those general authorities. See, there's no specific authorities in the Mormon church. They're all general authorities. The jack of all trades, the master of none. Well, the Mormon Church has now gone to mostly uh, business degrees on the Quorum of the Twelve. It's a corporation now. It's not a church. Go look up the official name of the church. It is the corporation of the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's not a church. It's a corporation that makes money and has all the loopholes of tax uh, exempt and uh, tax deductions. Be that as it may, uh, the Mormons will argue today that uh, no tithing monies are ever paid to the authorities or to uh, anyone or anything, even the $4 billion mall. Yes, you heard me, billion, B with a B, $4 billion mall in ghetto downtown Salt Lake uh, with an underground garage that can basically uh, you know, park every car in the state of Utah at the same time. Um, there's no tithing monies used. Now, if you want to believe that, hey, pay your money, go to the mall. I think I'm starting to get this kind of like a theme song. Pay your money, go to the mall. Anyway, all the money in the Mormon church is from tithing. They didn't have any money. They had no money at Lorenzo Snow. Now, if the church bought which they have a lot of cattle ranches and a lot of open land and TV stations and radio stations. That was all bought with uh, tithing money. Was it magic money? Like the Mormons believe that it was like manna from heaven that dropped on uh, the prophets after Lorenzo Snow? Say, you don't have to have a brain. I didn't have one. I didn't have a brain. When I look at this stuff now and look back on it, I say to myself, oh my God, how did I believe this crap? Who else do I give my money to and I don't get a receipt? Even Walmart, I go into Walmart, I get a receipt. It shows what I bought, how much I paid, what the tax on it was. They're honest people. Where in this world do you pay tithing and they don't tell you what it bought? the Mormon Church, there's your quick, short, and correct answer. There is absolutely no accounting to the members of the church where their tithing money is spent. Well, we know that a large proportion of tithing money goes to Brigham Young University to run that university for brainwashing and making more new tithe payers come through there every year. Uh, if you're white and delightsome, and I've mentioned this in other videos, uh, you get to go to BYU at a 70% discount. The tithing uh, members of the church pay the rest of your tuition. If you're brown or black, 
You basically don't go to BYU. Oh, there's five, ten, maybe a twenty, maybe a hundred. Out of 30,000 white and delightsome children who are there. And you know what? The general authorities, the general authorities, their kids get to go for free. And their grandkids get to go for free. And you know what? There's not one brown person in that group. Go look at the general authorities of the Mormon church. Their behavior speaks louder than their words. There's no brown, there's no black, there's no diversity. It is white men in a corporation stealing money from other stupid white people, but, oh, the brown people can pay tithing to us, and so can the blacks. We'll take their tithing, but we don't want them at BYU. We don't want them in our tabernacle choir. I think they hire two guys to sit there. I don't think they can sing, but there's two blacks, and the camera keeps going to the blacks. You fall for that? I don't. So there's no accounting of your money. Now, if you're making good money, whatever, $200,000 a year, and of course when this tape is made, that's good money, and uh, you're paying 10%, obviously, uh, your tithing can be well over uh, $20,000 for the year. That's good money. If you got 4 million members, and that's what they, about what they have, 4 million members, that are active in the church, <clears throat> and out of that four million, there's probably only two million that are tithe payers. So they're making pretty good money off of their money. I've seen their cattle ranches uh, in the Midwest by Adam Ondiaman. They have all these magic places: the Hill Camora, Adam Ondiaman, the uh, Jackson uh, uh, County, Missouri. They have all these key secret phrases that if you're a Mormon, you know what that means. You know what that means. If you're a non-Mormon, you go, I don't know what it lives Jackson County, Missouri. It's just out in the middle of Missouri somewhere. I've driven by their cattle ranches. I've seen some, some, believe me, that's more in Florida and all over the United States and maybe other parts of the world. But I've driven on a freeway for probably more than 30 minutes passing just one cattle ranch of the Mormon church. They have uh, wheat fields. They have all kinds of uh, assets in the stock market. They certainly have lost their rear end like everybody else did in this bad economy in 2011 and 10. <clears throat> and that's why um, they used to have janitors that did all of the work for cleaning the uh, chapels and the um, temples and the stake centers. And now uh, Jesus came to uh, Monson and he said, you know, uh, Mr. Monson, uh, Elder Monson, or President Monson, they always have these fancy titles. How many times have I gotten on this camera and said, uh, this is David, uh, MS, I don't put my degree in front of, uh, what? who cares? Who cares? Anyway, President Monson gets a uh, revelation from Jesus, and Jesus says, you know, uh, Tommy, we can save some money. Let me give you an idea. Why don't we make those stupid people who give us 10%, we have to pay right now janitors. Why don't we tell the stupid people it's going to be a new blessing? You're going to serve Jesus. And we'll fire all the janitors, and we won't have any workman's comp, social security, we won't have any kinds of uh, expenses, and we'll have the members of the church do the janitorial work. I don't think the doctors and the dentists and the lawyers are going to mind bending over a public toilet and cleaning it. I think they believe in the cult. I think we can get away with this. They have. The people are resistant. They don't want to spend their Saturday and bring their kids and their wife and spend four hours vacuuming and washing windows and uh, cleaning out the toilet for Jesus. But they do. And they write a check at the end of the month for their tithing then they write a check for fast offering. Fast offering is another con, C-O-N, con of the Mormon church. You're supposed to skip a meal and your whole family. Well, again, I'm a social worker. You make small kids skip a meal, I'm finding that abusive. Be that as it may, they skip a meal and then the money they saved from that meal, they give to the Mormon church. Not just the tithing, but now the fast offering. 
Well, I think it's a slow offering myself, but it's fast offering. Because, see, the Mormons always use the opposite word. We love you, it means we hate you. Fast offering, it's slow offering. So now you got your tithing that you don't know where the hell that money went at all. Now you've got your uh, fast offering, and it's supposed to go to the uh, poor and the people who can't eat, and uh, that money is supposed to be a separate fund. Well, now that's turned a little bit into the humanitarian fund, which is a joke and a half. Please go on the internet and look at the numbers that the Mormon Church says it does for poor people throughout the world. You will be astounded, just like I was, and realize that the mall downtown costs more money than the Mormon Church has ever given in the last 30 years to poor humanitarian services. So now your tithing is not accounted for, your fast offering is not accounted for, and now <laughs> they have a brand new fund, and most of you watching this have never heard of it because I, I have a, a website that keeps us all up to date on what uh, is going on. But now they have a new <laughs> way to get your money, and they're clever. They're clever, clever. It's called, uh, well, one of them is uh, the Perpetual uh, Education Fund, uh, where they loan money uh, at full interest to black and brown people that are in other countries that they don't want coming to BYU. Uh, they don't want their faces and their skin color there. So there's the Perpetual Education Fund that is uh, not accounted for, how many people are in it, how much it's costing, administrative costs, whatever. And um, the other funds, <laughs> the other funds, the other money that they rob from you. If you're a Mormon, you're really right at about 16 or 17 percent of your gross income per year goes to be an active member of the Mormon Church. Um, that's a lot of money out of a young family and there's no benefits and there's no... <laughs> you're just, you just have a temple recommend. It's a little piece of paper that says this is a good person and they paid their money to us and you can go ahead now and go to the temple and you can do other things. That's what you got for your 16% donation. Now, there's always uh, little drives and uh, barbecues and potluck dinners where there's donations and uh, new ways. Uh, there used to be the missionary fund uh, where you sent your child on a mission for the Mormon church, but you paid for the child to be in a foreign country, their clothing, their housing and everything. Uh, that has been corrected a little bit. Uh, the church now pays much of the uh, missionary expense because the parents can't. The parents can't and they want those new converts to come in and give them their money and go to the mall. <laughs> so, <laughs> there are several funds. You've got the tithing funds, you've got the fast offerings, you've got a perpetual education that's not accounted for, the humanitarian fund. There is nothing accounted for in the monies of the Mormon Church. If that makes sense to you, please call a missionary. Please get in the little white clothes and put your garments on and get baptized. Please join them. Be part of their group. <laughs> Anyone that got a 16% raise, uh, even in good times, that's a good raise. Right now, you, most people only have a job. But uh, the, I was in uh, um, Tascadero, California. And I was watching TV. <laughs> the Hinkster. Uh, we who have left the church called uh, uh, Gordon Hinckley the Hinkster. <laughs> he lied with Mike Wallace when Mike Wallace said, you know, are these, uh, uh, is God uh, as God is, man once was, and that phrase in the Mormon church. And Hinckley said, I, I don't think <laughs> we teach that. What a liar. What a liar. And then the, the Hankster decided to buy the Salamander letter from um, Hoffman. And Hoffman faked the letter, but, you know, Jesus never said a word to Hinckley. And Hinckley took your tithing money, and he spent over a million dollars for a phony letter. Got involved in a murder of a bishop, got involved in, and, and Jesus said, I, I'm not going to tell Hinckley, <laughs> he's a bad prophet, I'm just going to let him take it on the nose. 
Then Jesus comes to Hinckley and he goes, you know what? I don't have a mall. I own all these planets and I'm king of the universe. I know all, I am all, but you know what? I don't have a damn mall. Build me a mall. Use the people's investment money that they made off of tithing and tell the people that they're, you're not using their tithing money. You're just using investment tithing money. And build me a $4 billion mall. The most expensive mall ever built in the history. I, I don't know, maybe King Solomon's temple costs more, but it wasn't a mall. Mormon Church spent $125 million, with an M, dollars to divert the City Creek in through the City Creek Mall. They spent millions 50 years before to hide the creek so that basically you could use it and traffic could go over it. Now they dig it up, and again, you're 124 million, and now it weaves through the uh, City Creek Mall. That was a good use of money. You know, when I was in the Philippines and all those little kids there ate on eight, ten cents a day, that would have fed a lot of kids. But hey, let the Mormons go to their fancy mall and, and you know, credit cards and liquor and, and uh, I think there's a Victoria's Secrets in there. I don't know how that's going to compete with uh, the distribution center, but be that as it may. Now, here's how the Mormon church fools its people. It will say to the people, we have done an accounting by legitimate CPA firms that indicate that all of the money has been accounted for and it has all been spent and uh, basically we know where that money went. The Mormons go, hmm, see? We're giving to the poor. We have Jesus points and we're wearing our garments. God, life is good. This has to be, other than the Salem witch trials, this has to be one of the most insane group of people that have gathered together in the name of a religion, which is really a corporation. Look at the firms that audit the Mormon church. That makes some sense to me. Maybe not to you. But if they're Mormon-owned, and they're paid millions of dollars to do that accounting, and most of their CPAs are Mormons, are you suspicious? If you're a Mormon, you're not. I'm suspicious. I want to see objective CPA accounting of the Mormon church. I want to see the numbers. I want to see how much Gordon Hinckley, the Hinkster, came on TV, I told you, in a Tasket Arrow there a couple of years ago, well, maybe 10 years ago, and said, we used to have a non- paid clergy. No one ever made any money in the Mormon church who was leadership. Well, he was a liar there because the way they used to make money is they put all of these 12 apostles on 8 or 10 or 15 different church-owned uh, boards of uh, trust. And they received whatever, 20, 50, 70 thousand dollars from each board that they sat on. They seldom went to a meeting. They seldom voted. They were just there as a decoration to be able to pull down a legal, legitimate uh, stipend or um, a fee, consulting fee. Well, I don't know why that went to crap. I assume that it was the IRS that didn't kind of uh, appreciate that. So the Mormon Church, Jesus came down to Hinckley. I guess Jesus and Hinckley spent a lot of time together, but not over buying the Salamander letter with uh, Hoffman. Uh, so Hinckley came on TV and said, you know, we used to have a non-paid clergy, and we bragged about that a lot. I'm paraphrasing. And um, now I want to announce to the world that we do pay our people. And um, it wasn't a real big thing. It wasn't a, you know, it didn't ripple through the Mormon Church. The Mormons are so beat down and so brainwashed, you can say, like Joseph Smith said, I want to have sex with your wife, and I just want to test your faith that you know that I'm the prophet. Come here, Margaret. You just watch, Peter. Peter just bows his head and says, yes, that's what you do in the temple. You bow your head and you say yes. 
So the Mormon church went to paying their people. You will hear Mormons say, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's one of their biggest phrases. It doesn't matter that Jesus said this was a cult. <laughs> They'll say that to you. And you just shake your head. You just wonder where their brain went. Did it just melt? Uh, so they start to pay their general authorities. And the Mormon people are taught and trained that the authorities don't need the money. They're all rich and independently wealthy. And why do they need the money? The Mormons are taught, well, most of them basically have left very uh, big jobs and got lots and lots of money and we're just trying to make up a little bit. <laughs> Jeez. I can't even say this with a straight face because I used to believe this crap. So they got six figure incomes now. They've got life insurance. They've got health insurance. They've got many, many perks. Their children have tuition uh, waivers at BYU and other perks all through the Utah culture. Limos, airplanes, jet, Learjet. Not just, you know, sitting in first class going to an opening of a temple somewhere, but Learjets. They don't account for anything. They don't have to account for anything. They have got a ready-made, brainwashed cult group of people that believe if they now give them money that they're going to go to heaven. Now here is the other thing you hear the Mormons say to you, and you're going to fall over. You're going to fall over when you hear this doctrine. I don't mind paying my tithing. I believe the men are called by God. And even if they spend the money wrong, I've been promised that I'll be blessed. Even if they're crooks, even if they're criminals, and I give them my money, Jesus is going to let me in. There's no accounting. And what's funny is the people have no accounting. When I give money to a charity or I give money to somebody that uh, I want to give money to, I, I, I think I have a responsibility to follow that money. If it's to feed children, I want to see food going into the child's mouth or clothes, uh, shoes going on their feet. But the Mormons, they just give that money away and they don't give a rat's ass how that money is spent. They're not allowed to vote on it. They're not allowed to have any input in it. They don't see a... Uh, uh, annual report at the end of the year that where the millions and billions of dollars went. If you could see how much those authorities were making, uh, here, here's the other thing, <laughs> here's the other Mormon phrase that, that you're taught in the cult. The reason the Mormon church doesn't tell about its money is because poor people will see how much money the Mormon church has and then they're going to want some. How many times have I heard that one? It's secret because poor people will be jealous. Well, you know, I think middle class and rich people <laughs> would be jealous. They have it covered 24-7, 360 degrees, no matter what you say to a Mormon, what figures you give them, what evidence you give them, what evidence they don't have, it doesn't matter. I have learned more about cults and brainwashing in the Mormon church than I ever learned in my masters below in education. And I did study some, some cult uh, behaviors and counseling and whatever. I don't care what you say to a Mormon. If you say, you know, a million men Joseph Smith said that a million men died on Hill Camorra in the last battle in the Book of Mormon. But there in New York, we never found any swords. We never found any helmets. We never found any um, breastplates, protection, armor, chariots, which Joseph said they had, and they didn't. It was far advanced technology for them. You have no archaeological evidence of the Book of Mormon. That doesn't matter. The Lord works in mysterious ways. And maybe he gathered up all of that armor and took it into heaven to test our faith. I'm telling you, if you have an IQ in the double digits, 
I don't know how I or you got into the Mormon church. We were born into it. We didn't have much of a say. We were raised in it. It appeared normal to us. It appeared that uh, sex with 14-year-olds and having 30 wives is a good idea. Paying 16% of your income to an organization that never accounts for it, that's okay because Jesus will make it right. Jesus will make it right. Well, you know, I'm kind of on my own. I don't pay the tithing anymore. I don't depend upon Jesus anymore. And I realize I offend some Christians, and, and I'm not doing that on purpose. I'm just simply saying I'm an atheist, that once the golden plates uh, disappeared into an unknown place, and no one can see them or touch them and know that they were there, and then a man walks on water, it's kind of, you know, kind of out of the same magic box. So I've moved towards atheism in my old age. But be careful of your money. You work hard for it. My gosh, we, we've all had children and families where we've you know, been drivers and, and construction workers and businessmen and owning our own business and being up at night worrying about making payroll. Good Lord, you work for your money. Hinkley, the hankster, never had a job. He was 90-whatever when he died. He lived off the Mormon church. Joseph Smith never had a job. He set the foundation for this fraud. And basically, anyone that doesn't want to work, they need to work their way up in the Mormon church because you get free money for being spiritual. All you got to do is pretend you're spiritual and you'll move up. And now you get free money and you don't have to account for it. You don't. You don't have to account for it. So, I say, get a receipt. Go to Walmart. Get a damn receipt. See what you bought. See how much it costs. See what its warranty is. Its return policy. See the taxes on it. Be informed. I'm not giving my money to any organization ever again until I see with these eyes where that money goes. And then I will use this brain and determine, is that where I want my money to go? You don't want to do that? Pay your money, go to the mall. Thanks.